She's around 25 years old. Her and her husband are new to the military. He, he is a, a young pilot, and um, neither of them really knows much about being in the military. Stars and Stripes picked up the strip, which is a humorous look at the trials and tribulations of the military spouse. Definitely the stuff that happens to her and her friends have either happened to me or somebody I know or somebody in my family. My family's been military all my life, and so I've got a lot of people I can pull stories from. Flying one airplane for eight years. It's like, you were there eight years? Well, not in Kadena. Okay. Well, I've okay. been flying AWACS for eight years. Major Negron has come to Georgia to train as a pilot in the Air Force's J-STARS program. The modified Boeing 707s are packed with sophisticated monitoring and communication stations and usually operate as direct electronic support of ground operations. He's also a frequent collaborator on the strip. We'll either uh, both come up with an idea and say, hey, that, that'd make a good strip, and then uh, after the initial hand-drawn sketches, We'll both uh, collaborate on the writing. He thinks it's important work. The military spouse is the other half of the uh, military member. Uh, they're a vital role in uh, supporting what the military member is doing. Here, Julie gets a glimpse of the world Angel is entering. She's a seasoned military spouse, and she's still learning. Jenny has so much more to catch up on. Protocol, spouses, meetings, there are certain ways that you're supposed to behave or dress, so she still has to get that kind of thing down. That her and her husband can't ever seem to get it together for their anniversary. Julie first pencil sketches each strip, then inks it in her computer. Her work cycle intensifies as the deadline for turning a month's worth of strips approaches. Like most comic strip artists these days, Julie maintains a blog and posts the new strips on the web. I put it on the internet so that I could share it with military spouses I was in contact with around the world through a website called Air Force Crossroads. And it's where Air Force spouses can go to talk to each other about the bases that they're getting ready to move to or about Air Force situations that they find themselves in. They start sharing it with their friends. They all had blogs that they posted the comic strip on and it just took off. I started getting email like crazy. Images of military life have been giving readers something to identify with since colonial days. The Library of Congress holds a vast collection of them. Perhaps the earliest American military image is the depiction of the Boston Massacre of 1770, when British soldiers killed five civilians. The image was created by Paul Revere. Paul Revere, famous for his midnight ride. He's probably our first military cartoonist. He did what was probably the first propaganda um, pro-American cartoon um, about the massacre of Americans in Boston. Through the early decades of our history, there were always images of military activity, some of them heroic, others with an editorial or satiric edge. Sarah Duke, curator of graphic and applied art, says by the time the Civil War started in 1861, soldiers were creating pictures that reflected their everyday lives, from campground to battlefield. The representations that were coming out of soldiers during the Civil War tended to be not so funny. Um, images of the horrors of war, images of prison imprisonment, um, images of camp life. Um, the soldiers' pictures tend to be a little more stark and a little more disturbing, actually. I'm holding in my hand a copy of the first Stars and Stripes, which was born in Bloomfield, Missouri on November 9th, 1861. And the deadline was the Union, it must and shall be preserved. The idea was a newspaper for the troops by the troops. And uh, so that philosophy is carried on through. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Bill McNamara has a healthy respect for Stars and Stripes independence and history. Following D-Day, he led the team that followed the invasion into France, published a mimeographed beachhead bulletin, and later, when they found printing facilities, a full version of the paper.
World War II was a golden age for military cartoonists. Sergeant George Baker's Sad Sack, the original G.I. Joe by Sergeant Dave Breger, who also created a strip called G.I. Jerry to explain Germans to Allied troops. There was Dick Wingert's dumpy Little Hubert. But the gold standard for the golden age was Bill Malden and his scruffy soldiers, Willie and Joe. Malden also was really a G.I cartoonist, he didn't really take too kindly to officers. He didn't mind them, but he just cartooned basically what the GIs felt towards officers. And this is a prime example of that. You see a one-star general right here, two GIs in the mud, and they're saying, sir, do you have to draw fire while you're inspiring us? Malden traveled with troops as they fought their way up Italy, depicting the life of the GI with sympathy and humor over and over. There's a famous uh, Bill Malden cartoon where an American soldier um, meets a, a, a German soldier in Italy. And didn't we meet at casino? You know, hadn't, haven't we met before? Um, you know, are you sleeping with, with two blankets or three in the pouring rain? Are you warming your hands at the back of a tank. Um, none of this is pretty, but Malden found a way to make it funny, to, a, a way to make the soldiers realize that they could get up another day and do the work that had to be done. Malden was popular with troops, but he drew the ire of General George Patton. First, there was the one about the soldiers coming to an entertainment. What you see here is a USO show in an old opera house and the GIs, muddy from the front, are coming in to see the girls. You see our girls, girls, girls. And then the officers are waiting at the stage door to pick up the girls right after um, the show and take them out. Patton thought this was basically insubordination and, you know, it would turn the GIs against their officers. And then there was the one with Willie and Joe in a Jeep, stopped before a billboard as they entered Patton's third army area. And it says, fines. No helmet, $15 fine, no necktie, $25 fine, and so forth, all the fines. And the caption reads, Radio the old man, we're going to be late, we have to take a thousand mile detour. And everybody who had ever <laughs> been near a third army uh, <clears throat> area <laughs> thought it was hilarious, but Patton was furious <laughs> and accused us of uh, undermining the morale of his third army and wanted to ban it. But Eisenhower told him to back off. <laughs> the humor is wonderful for everybody that's has, leading a miserable life in mud and rain and everything to get a good laugh once in a while. The tradition of quality cartoons would continue for a time after the war. Don Shepard created Victoria Donkashane, VD for short. The message, beware of a certain class of German Fräuleins. There was a bit of outrage expressed by Germans, and Shep depicted himself being chased out of Germany by VD when he left. So not only did he do a lovely buzz in me, Veronica Dankeschön, he did a very nice Goering as well. Shepard also drew the very serious journalistic assignment as courtroom artist for the Nuremberg trials of Nazi war criminals. Even as Stars and Stripes' storied history lives on in leather-bound volumes, the archive has been digitized, and the current editors look to increase their relevance on the web. If you do it right, we have a, a newspaper that looks one way and a website that looks another. You can lead people back and forth between the two. And Terry Leonard thinks there's still a place for the hard copy. Each edition passed through many hands just because of the nature of what service members do.